Is there a word I can say on this podcast that will get it deleted forever? And then we take a look at a particularly odd and current conspiracy. Is it possible that the video game Apex Legends is enchanted or cursed? And if that is true, what does that say about all other successful media in the world? Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you are having a great day too. Season 5, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, and if you listen to the preview, if you listen to my previously on Dead Rabbit episode, um, yes, the Carpenter Copter and the Jason Jalopy have been destroyed temporarily. We will be fixing them, but we just need to find some parts. So in the meantime, we're stuck with the Dead Rabbit dirigible. And it just reminds me of that terrible joke I told, and then the rabbit robot will get us around. And we'll do a lot of hiking, I think. But we needed to shake things up. The system didn't want us to be telling the truth. And, you know, that's funny. That's actually a perfect segue for our first story. Now, our first story, we're going to take a little trip down a rabbit hole. No pun intended. And it's funny because when I first read it, it, really, I had the same opinion the last time I read it. I read the story over and over and over again and looked into it a bit more. And I haven't really budged on how I feel about it. But we'll, we're will we going to go ahead and discuss it and I will, we'll, just, we'll just go from there. I, I, okay, well, I, let's get into it. Now this story, and I know I always say this. This story is from The Conspiracy Iceberg, and it is one of the most requested stories that I've gotten, and I always say that, but it's always true. That's why I say that. This one, this one, okay, these are all the people who requested this story, and if I didn't add your name in here, I'm sorry, because there's multiple spellings of this. People are like, just get to the, get, just get to the word, Jason, say the word so your podcast will shut off. These are the people who requested it. We have Dave. Most of these guys are on YouTube. Dave Humbug. Actually, that was an email. This is off to a great start. Fev Key, Astoria, Morty Weirdland, Doom Lord, Gabriel, Depressive Suicidal Black Metal, Marceline, and oddly enough, on uh, through Gmail, Bob Ross and Luis. Luis? And neither of them mentioned the word in their email. But when I did the search for the what I because I had to go make sure I added everybody for this, they showed up as well. So is that possibly a red flag? Is that a little bit of truth in the story of Aratus? Aratus? Aratus. E Aratus. So <laughs> now I'm realizing I can't say the word I have to say all for the rest of the episode. Aratus are basically the definition of it's like a, a correction. It's like an error correction, erratas. Um, they would have pages. If you had a if you had a issue in a book where it was wrong, instead of republishing the whole book, they'd put pages in the back called erratas, which would like correct information. They don't really do that nowadays, but that was like an old timey thing they did. And generally, it means the correction of an error. It's a very common word, but there's different spellings of it in this conspiracy theory. So let's go ahead now with that totally long wind up. Let's go ahead and get into what actually is the erratas. Conspiracy. Again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Welcome back to Dead Rabbit Radio, baby. Erratus. So, on November 21st, 2015, we're, 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 we're hopping into just the rabbit warp. We're going just, we're swimming through the internet. Or would you be crawling on the webs? No, we're surfing through the internet, dude. Totally tubular. That term has totally gone out of vogue, but I still love it. Let's surf the web. I wonder who came up with that. No one's ever like, let's crawl through the web. Let's get stuck in the net. Surf the web. I wonder if somebody came up with that. That's not an organic phrase. Some marketing executive in 1992 got paid a million dollars to come up with surf the web. Anyways, we're surfing the web. It's 2015. The date is November 21st. And a video goes up on YouTube by... So, and actually, before I will get into the details, let me actually explain what the conspiracy theory is. The conspiracy theory is this. It's grown to become this. If you use the word erratas in any form online, it'll be taken off the web. All mention of it is gone. If you post it on 4chan, the thread will be deleted. If you keep posting it on 4chan, you may be banned. And oddly enough, sometimes you're banned for copyright violation. 
If you post articles about erratas, if you make videos about erratas, if you do a podcast about erratas, it triggers an algorithm that is in the system, in the internet, surfing the web, and it shuts down your, your channel, or shuts down your website, or bans you from a particular forum. So that's really what the conspiracy is. I should have gotten into that five minutes ago, but that's what the conspiracy is. That's why so many people are interested in this. That might be true. That might be true. But I don't think it's true in the sense that the conspiracy theory says it is. But let's go ahead and get into this. The way that Erratas was discovered was on November 21st, 2015, there is a music video or a, a EP released on YouTube by a band called the KFC Murder Chicks, which is a band made up of homeless girls. Their music's okay. I had to listen to some of it. They're okay. It was uploaded by a guy named Todd Ellsworth. Remember that name, but I'll repeat it later. She didn't really have to remember it. And in this description for the video, it says, A really good Coma Records release that seems to have disappeared from the internet. Remember to support the artist, Erratas or Busts. Like bust, you know, like Erratas or Bust. Like, I do this or, or do this other thing. Here, my mouth is super dry. I need to take a drink. So that was really the first mention of Erratas that is recognized in this conspiracy outside of the definition of what an errata is. But nobody noticed it when it went up on November 21st, 2015. No, it was just a video among a slew of videos that are released every hour on YouTube. On November 25th, 2015, there was a thread on the X board of 4chan about what are some spooky stories that happen to you at work. And one guy says, well, this didn't happen to me, but it happened to this girl that I knew. She was um, working at a company. She was working for a temp agency, and it was a really weird workplace. He said the company's going out of business, and they're having everyone like move stuff around to get ready to go out of business. And like every day, people would show up and get fired and be replaced by temp workers. And he was saying this girl he knew was a temporary worker at this unnamed company. And at one point, she was sent down into the basement to work with this dude packing boxes. And they were both giving a tape gun, and they had to use a tape gun on the appropriate boxes. And the girl's tape gun said Erratus on it. And she goes, what does this mean? And the dude she was with said, here, give me that. And he threw it away and says, don't tell anyone that you had that. Don't tell anyone that you saw that. Don't repeat that word. And she's like, why? And he goes, because I wrote a program that creeps through the company internet that anyone who uses that word gets fired. He goes, I don't know why they wanted that program, but I created it. So that was a weird story that happened at work. Now, if, is any of that true? We don't know. About a month later, December 19th, there was another thread on 4chan where someone was asking about the Erratus program because they they were curious because they had the story. It got a lot of attention on that thread because it's such a bizarre story. What does this word mean? And again, at this point, nobody's seen the Kentucky Fried Murder Chicks, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken Murder Chicks. No one's seen that video or it's been small. Small audience. They, no one's made the connection yet. But people are now talking about what is this possible thing called Erratus that gets people fired from companies. And someone responds, I've heard of that program as well. They named three companies. They named UPS, Unilever, and Ecolab. And they elaborated and said what it is, it, it, it is, it was developed by a third party that if someone has this program that utilizes the Erratus algorithm, they have unlimited access to any private database. So if you have, let's say, your UPS and you have all your employee files, a third party, Erratus is a third party program that will allow someone else to go in and have access to those files as if they were a human resource director at UPS, which would most likely make it to be some sort of governmental thing. And so by discussing it or exposing it, would basically get all mention of it wiped from the web. Now, I think right now you're starting to see a bit of an issue with this story. And really, most of the, I would say the majority of this research it was done actually by an author named Arcebio. And I'm going to have the links below. He did two long write ups on this on a website called Steam It. And it's basically the majority of the information that people have about the Erratus system, the Erratus mystery or conspiracy or however you want to call it. I don't know why my voice did that, but so thank you, Arcebo. He's definitely done all of the groundwork for this, definitely. It has all the links to all the 4chan stuff and things like that. But again, I think at this point you're starting to think, wait a second, wait a second. Something doesn't add up and, and let's just keep going here. So at this point, people start to make these connections between Erratus, 
and the Kentucky Fried Murder Chicken, <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken Murder Chicks. So at this point, people have found, because they're looking for a radis or any mention of a radis, they have found the Kentucky Fried Chicken Murder Girls YouTube video. And that's when they find out that the Kentucky Fried Murder Chick, KFC Chick, whatever, the KFC Murder Girls were a band made up of homeless girls. And in the original 4chan post where they were talking about a radis, the girl that who worked at the company, I left this as a little mystery part, so I'll reveal it now. The girl who worked at the company was previously homeless and played in a band. So people were now seeing a direct connection between the 4chan post and the video uploaded by Todd Ellsworth featuring the KFC Murder Girls. So, mysteries afoot. What is Erratus? We have all this stuff going on. We have this YouTube video. We have this supposed algorithm that walks the internet looking for mentions of it and fire, at the very least firing people who work at a company if they mention it at that company. Then another lead started. And again, there's just a bunch of weird stuff in this, but I think there's one kind of clear line going throughout it. The other main discovery in this was that there is a form of music called deep internet music where they try to find super, super rare samples uh, from like totally undiscovered videos and turn it into music. This is something they also do on the 4chan music board. There's a thing called Petite Tube, which is actually pretty cool. You go to it and it finds you YouTube videos that have like under 10 plays or zero plays or one play or something like that. I've done it a couple times. It's just, it will take you to a totally random thing. They were using that to create their music. At one point, someone used that and they found a video by a guy named Kronos for Life. And he posts, his mom made Jurassic Park videos, like just still pictures with like really hard to read writing on it. And then I guess the mom passed away. So Kronos for Life started a new YouTube channel to re-upload all of his mom's stuff. And the video started getting really weird because he would talk about like how awesome Jurassic Park was. But then he would talk about how YouTube's ruining his life and he's being hunted. It's really, really hard to read what is on the screen. So it's really hard to make sense of it. And there's this really kind of distorted pop songs or rap songs in the background. And I don't know if it's like that because he doesn't know how to do it or if it's like that stylistically or if it's to beat the copyright protection. But they're just very, very odd videos. But he's discovered because of this petite tube thing. Now, at that point... People are like, what is this weird stuff? Like, it's just this weird, odd YouTube channel. And they were trying to understand what was going on in the video. They turned on the auto captions for the one of his YouTube videos. In the auto captioning, so not on the captioning that he set up, in the auto captioning for one of the videos, it showed... The auto captioning is created by YouTube. A little, like, is trying to decipher what's going on and say what this is. It showed the address for the record label for KFC Murder Chicks. So we have a guy who releases a YouTube video saying a radis or bust. A couple days later, we have the first mention of a radis on 4chan. About a month later, we have a reference to more, another reference to a radis. After that, pretty much any time you mentioned a radis, supposedly you got banned from 4chan, so you don't see it pop up as much now. And in, in, in between all that time and a couple months afterwards, Kronos for Life was releasing these videos where he was mentioning a radis and... and his video had that subtitle for the KFC Murder Chicks record label, even though it was the AI was just figuring out garbage. Like, he didn't say it. It was an auto-caption that he was said. It was this weird musical tract, and it picked up the information and had that there. And at one point, to top this all off, at one point, Kronos for Life said his favorite Jurassic Park movie was the second one, and at that point, the people who were really digging into the Erratus mystery at the time realized that Todd Ellsworth is an anagram for the Lost World. Yes, that was the title of Jurassic Park 2. This mystery, as convoluted as it seems, has spanned, at this point now, maybe three, four years. It pops up from time to time. You'll hear mentions of it. You, you, I read the list of everyone who was recommending it. Here's the thing. There is a clear flaw in the conspiracy. And it, I realized it when I first read about it. And then I did some more digging. And I went back. Read it again. Went back. And, and here's the thing. The fact that the website that tells me all this information is up. Shows that there is no algorithm that shuts down websites or YouTube channels or podcasts and things like that. There have been YouTube channels that have reported on erratas And then mysteriously stopped being uploaded. Now, that's very, very easy to fake, and people stop uploading 
anyways. But if it goes after every mention of itself, then how do I know about it? How was I able to read all that information and go into the 4chan archives and look at all those links and everything like that? If a Radis is anything, if it's anything at all... Now, again, I think there's basically two versions of this myth. All the information I read you doesn't ever really say that if you mention it, you get deleted from YouTube and things like that. That's almost all been added afterwards. That if you look at the original mention of Aratus, it's located in this single company. And then the secondary mention is it's spread across a couple different companies. But that's it. it. The legend has grown to say if you even mention it, you'll get banned from 4chan. And it's this algorithm and you can't fight it. And just by saying it can get your entire channel shut down. Yet there's multiple, multiple resources about it. However, this is, we'll just put on our conspiracy cap here. I don't think it's a rogue AI or even a purposefully built AI crawling the web, surfing the web, looking for mentions of itself and deleting it. I think what, if it is anything, if it is anything, I think it is an incredibly advanced troll group, all built out of the Steemit article. I think the pieces were, I, this, this would be my conspiracy theory. I'm not saying it's true, but this would be my conspiracy theory. A couple dudes got together and said, let's create basically an ARG that's a trap. Where we're going to put this YouTube video up. We're going to write a couple days later about it on um, 4chan to get, the, to get the people looking for the YouTube video. I think it's a little suspicious that of all the videos you can find on Petite Tube, 4chan happens to find one that is kind of linked to a Radis within that same general time period. That's very suspicious. Anyone could just say, hey, look at I found this weird video on Petite Tube. Or know where that video would be at or fake that or whatever. So I think it's if, if it's anything, again, if it's anything, it would be engineered. So you have a, a group of trolls and they say, let's do, let's have some fun. <laughs> let's start basically an ARG that's harmful. So we're going to set all this stuff up and then... You, you're a mod, you're a mod for the export, right? And he's like, yeah, I'm a mod. Whenever someone posts a Radis, ban them. And that'll help spread the legend. And then they get someone else to say, hey, tell you what, you set up a YouTube channel, do a couple videos, talk about a Radis, and then stop doing the YouTube channel. And then we'll have one person write this article on Steam It that basically details the whole myth. We've created this myth. And to make it extra fun for the trolls, they can then, whenever someone does mention it in real life, electronically harass them, shut down their podcast, shut down their YouTube channel to help spread that myth. It's basically an ARG only they can play. And when you mention the word Aratus or put it in a title or anything like that, you have actually made yourself a target of this organization. If it's anything, that's what I think it is. I don't think it's some super advanced AI. I don't think it's some sort of creepy conspiracy. I think really all the detail information is made up. There is a real band called the Kentucky Fried, the KFC Murder Chicks. They exist. Cronus for Life really has videos, but I think they're probably all in on it. Maybe not the KFC Murder Chicks, but I don't know. They're all in on it. It's all a fun game to them. And basically, it's tag where they are all it. And if you mention or use that word, you are the person they're coming after. I think that's it. If it exists at all, which I'm pretty likely it doesn't. But I think it's still an interesting conspiracy. It's funny because as I, again, as I was researching it the whole time, I'm thinking, I again put myself in the mindset like maybe this is true. But the fact that I kept was able to keep going back to an article referencing it, I go, it's obviously not true. Like if the idea is that everything is scrubbed from the internet and people are unpersoned and they disappear, but I can keep going to this article that was written two years ago, then obviously the 4chan archives are up, all this stuff, if all this information is available, that part of the myth isn't true. What may be true is everyone else who mentioned it who's outside of that group. They could be long gone from the internet. Completely scrubbed. We wouldn't know it. You might wonder, hey, I wonder what happened to my favorite YouTuber. I wonder what happened to that weird guy who had that podcast. I wonder what happened to that girl at work posting on 4chan on her breaks. <laughs> she probably got arrested by the police, but you know what I mean? Like, if you're not a player in the game, you're a target. And you wouldn't know they were targets. Because they would simply make the reference and then they would be deleted from the internet. Like the lawnmower man being like, no, digitized out. But no, like you could have, like your website would get shut down. You'd get banned from your forum, things like that. It's one of, it's one of, it's one of three things, really. The, it's not true at all, which is the most likely thing. 
It's true, but the algorithm is so poorly designed that an article can stay up for two years directing you how to find more information about it. Or it's real, but the algorithm isn't, and it's a group of people who either still are, or at least at some time, were shutting down anyone who mentioned this word just for a troll. We will find out if this show gets deleted, but the fact that I'm reporting on it pretty much shows that I'm the camp that I'm in. I don't think that it's I don't think it's real. Still a fascinating story though. A modern day myth. I think we'll see more of these things, stories that grow out of technology. Like more myths and hauntings that grow out of technology. Now I loathe going over my time limit. And right now, honestly, I that Aratus mystery went quite long. So I think I want to save the other story for tomorrow. I want to keep the shows tight. I want to keep them lean. So, how's that? Ooh, two-parter for... Yeah, yeah, we'll just do a two-parter for season five. The first episode of season five. A two-parter. It's mystery. Now, I will give you a hint. I will give you a hint. We'll end it like this. We're doing things... We're going to do things a bit differently this season. We're sticking with... There's two core components to the show. Paranormal Conspiracy and True Crime. Daily Show. I don't ever want to change those things. I think that will ruin the vibe of the show. But there's been something that I've always wanted to do, and I would always kind of not do it. So uh, there are conspiracy theories or weird things that I personally believe in, but I've always wanted to do stories that had links so you could go and research more on your own. And there's been some things that I've come up with, and I was like, oh, but I can't find any proof or links and stuff like that. What I've realized after 200 episodes is most of you guys don't actually click on the show notes. A lot of people will comment, hey, did you know this? And I was like, yeah, this this is the first show note. So I think I'm going to try it this season. I think we're going to talk about some of, not necessarily conspiracies I believe in, but conspiracies that I've thought of. Not like made up like I'm some science fiction writer, but things that I've thought are possible. Again, not saying that they're true, but things that are possible. Well, it might not work. It might make the show more crazy it might make the show a little more like this guy's a lunatic type of thing but what i wanted to talk about and i'll give you the hint for tomorrow's episode is we know houses if you believe in this stuff if you believe in this stuff houses can be haunted objects can be cursed but can the same thing be done for music visual images video games and websites is it possible? And now that's not a conspiracy that that actually is a kind of a conspiracy theory that I can't find any resources on. But I personally believe I believe that a website is in the modern day just as stable as a location or a place as a house or a thicket in the middle of the woods or a well where a little girl gets drowned. I think that you could have a website that has the same energy as a sacred place. It's simply not in our physical realm, but it still has that space in our consciousness. People go to Facebook more often than they go to the mall. And if a mall can be haunted, which actually would be a pretty dope... (laughs) You have a different ghost in each store. Some guy is like the pretzel cord. He's like, he choked. And then you have a guy who had a hunting accident in one of those malls where they sell guns. One of those cool malls. You have a flat guy who got caught in the escalator, but... Haunted mall aside, my script, trademark, if a mall can be haunted or a house can be haunted and you visit Instagram more often than you visit your mom's house, your consciousness will read that website as an actual place. And can a website be haunted? Can a website be enchanted? And more importantly, well, no, not more importantly, but the same thing. We talk about, like, these symbols in music and movies, and it's like, oh, it's so the Illuminati can do this, and they're trying to, like, predictive programming and prepare us for the reptile invasion, blah, 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 blah. What if it's magical spells? Like, the reason why movies are hit movies... Oh, I'm just doing the segment. I'll just keep going. Maybe the reason why the movies are, like, successful movies... Like, movies beyond just being successful. What if they're enchanted? And funny, even more funny than that, 
What if, like, movies that flop that are supposed to do really, really good, like John Carter, where they dump millions of dollars into it, or King Arthur, or whatever it is, that someone else put a curse on that movie so when people... And I'm not saying that you go see it and, like, your jaw falls off and you melt as an audience member. I'm saying that the movie is just plagued, and not, like, the set or anything. The film itself, like, the images itself can't see this is why i usually don't talk about this stuff because it really just sounds like super crazy and i can't blame it on anyone else i can't be like i don't believe it here's some links like can a film the images itself be enchanted or cursed and the reason why i'm bringing this up is because i'm pretty sure that apex legends is enchanted not just an enchanting romp Oh, and I guess I should say this too. Dead Rabbit Radio is my origin name. So if y'all want to play, I usually play on Friday nights. If you want to play some Apex Legends with me, Dead Rabbit Radio, all one word. But here's the weird thing. I've watched, far, I've watched through my entire life watching Star Trek, reading Spider-Man comic books, all sorts of stuff. I've never had a dream where I've met Spider-Man, ever. I've maybe had in 42 years watching hundreds, probably close to thousands of hours of Star Trek and reading Star Trek novels and things like that, playing Star Trek video games. I've had maybe two or three dreams about Star Trek. And I remember I always was like a little depressed. I was like, oh man, I wish I dreamt about Star Trek more. I wish I could dream about Star Trek more. I've been playing Apex Legends for maybe three weeks and I dream about Apex Legends every single night. Sometimes I'm in King's Canyon running around with a gun blowing people up. Sometimes I'm having a normal Jason dream and I'll pick up a newspaper in the dream and it'll be an article about Apex Legends. Or there'll be a billboard for Apex Legends in my dream. I'll see a news report about a new character that's being unlocked this weekend. Super creepy. And I was telling my friend that and he goes, well, you know, it might be different because it's like a competitive-based game. I said, "I listen, man, I, according to Steam, I put in 700 hours of Team Fortress 2. I probably put in at least that in Battlefield 2. I almost went pro with that game, semi-pro. But I mean, like, I studied Battlefield 2. I've put in hundreds of hours of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Resident Evil 4. Never dreamt about those. Never dreamt I was hanging out with CJ getting high. Two, three weeks of, of, and really not that much either. I would probably, during my break, I played about two, three hours a night. Two, three hours a day when I was taking a break off. Before that, the first two weeks though, when I started having the dreams, I'd play for maybe two, three hours on a Friday night, and then the next week I would play for another Friday night. And at that point, the dreams had already started. And when I'm playing the game, I have flashbacks. I'll be in an area where I died previously. And I'll be like thinking, don't go to that roof. Something bad happened to you up there. It's super bizarre. I've never encountered anything like this in a video game before. And I used to be a hardcore gamer. Like I said, hours, I would play video games six, seven hours a day. I'd get off work and play video games until like three or four in the morning. Never had this type of experience with it. The people who made Apex Legends, they released, they did Call of Duty, like Modern Warfare 3 or something like that. They ended up getting laid off from that company. They started their own company. First game came out, went, did okay. Second game came out, huge bomb. This was basically their final swing at bat. They had a mediocre game that millions of dollars was pumped into. They had a sequel that millions of dollars was pumped into, and it bombed. They were getting ready to get back on the chopping block because they didn't have any huge hits. And then they released Apex Legends, which ended up having, I think, within the first week, 50 million players. First day, I think it was within the first 24 hours, 14 million people downloaded that game and were playing. Super successful game. People talk a lot about things like deals with the devil. And I think a lot of times it's used metaphorically. But to create a perfect game with absolutely no marketing or buildup, it just was released. With some streamers streaming it the first day. But it was simply released. It wasn't announced. There was no these big meetings. It was simply released and becomes the second biggest game out right now. Huge game. By a company that really was had two, a mediocre success and a failure on its belt. To create a perfect game in a genre they never ever worked on before. Respawn never did a Battle Royale game before. And for it to have that type of effect on someone who plays it casually. Just last night I dreamt about dreamt about it. I don't know, I just think it's weird. 
And I've always had that idea that a website or any piece of like electronic media could be as haunted or cursed or enchanted just as much as any other object. But then we have this combination of a game that is wildly successful, developed by a team who had never made a Battle Royale game before, and they just hit everything exactly right. The effect it has on even casual players. If you did make a deal with the devil, literally, you think what would he want out of the bargain? What would be a what would be a better trade-off for him? The two souls of the developers or the developing team, or I'll help you make a perfect game, but I want to be in it. I want people to become obsessed with me. Not in it like he's the devil is a playable character. He's running around. He's carrying like rifles. He's like, come on, go, go, go. But you know what I mean? Like this mystical force, this dark energy into this game that when you play it, it, every time you play it, you think you're shooting and chipping away at someone's shield, but it's actually chipping away at you. Getting into your subconscious is a hard thing to do, really. You may have a bad day at work and then go home and dream about work. Maybe. But when's the last time that you watched a television show, you watched The Big Bang Theory, God save you, but you watched The Big Bang Theory five days a week, and you just dreamt that you were trapped in that apartment. Oh my God, that's hell. That would be be a nightmare for me. But that's about the, honestly, the amount of time that I've put into this game. I've probably put in altogether maybe like, 20-30 hours into it and I'm having dreams about it every night and sometimes the images in the dreams are so subtle I miss them so bizarre so bizarre if you made a deal with the devil instead of just taking your souls go into the product they're making make it the number one game movie song book in the world for a brief time Don't want them to get cocky. You want them, the developers, to have to come back to you and make another deal. But for that time, while they are ingesting that media, you think you're reading a good book or hearing a good song or playing an amazingly created video game. But what's really happening is your entertainment value is your part of the bargain. You're getting a little mindless fun for a few hours and the dark energy behind it is getting your soul for as long as it wants. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be your email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at Jason O'Carpenter. Yes, I still am going to play Apex Legends, but Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. (laughs) 